cat's hand. Oh. Are you recording already, Marilyn? I don't know why that's on. Oops. So, muy buenos días, muy buenos días y feliz, feliz lunes, feliz lunes, feliz abril. Um, Sí, uh, bienvenidos y bienvenidas a la primera clase de la primavera. So welcome to our first class of spring break, uh, spring break, spring season, la temporada de, de la primavera, yeah, spring season, uh, la estación de primavera. Uh, bueno, uh, para que sepan, just so you guys know, we're going to take just a couple of minutes to go over, you know, general stuff. Um, and I'll take any questions you have after that. And then I want to dive into doing some things, some preliminary things to, um, kind of get warmed up and then some things to do in smaller breakout rooms. So you guys know, um, for the first class, if, uh, I have kind of preset in in my mind groups when we go into breakout um to try to make sure that i group people in similar um in similar learning levels okay so if you're coming in from the absolute beginner class you'll be in with people who are in that same boat if you've been with us for a year or more you'll be in a more uh, uh, you know, a group that's more comfortable with doing harder things. And if for any reason, the group I place you in is like totally not appropriate, you need something easier, you need something harder, just shoot me a quick email later. No big deal. Okay. Generally, when we go into breakout room, I try to keep it to about three or four people. I wish I could just pre, well, I could pre <laughs> Zoom, but then I would need to know ahead of time exactly every person that's going to attend. And, you know, we always have a few people who can't attend. So I kind of have to do it real time, uh, dividing those groups up. So when I actually do that for your activity, it may take just a minute or two to, for me to get everybody sorted out. Oh, we still have a few people coming on in. Okay. Bueno, vamos a empezar. We're going to begin today, kind of the, the roadmap. I have in mind uh, after a week off is for people to get comfortable just talking about really general things and asking really general questions. So you'll see what those questions are soon. Uh, but we're going to be uh, doing some uh, conversing in smaller groups with kind of some bigger questions. Uh, questions. Ooh, you'll be actually making questions and answering questions and talking in groups. I want to show you the, the question words you may need. Ah, and share screen now. You should see our question words. Pueden ver las preguntas, los interrogativos. Can you see the interrogative words? Sí. Sí. Mm -hmm. Okay. Vale. Magnifico. So you are going to see not all, but some of those, and you may want to use some questions that I don't have on my next screen when you go into breakout rooms, but, uh, pero si, ¿sí? uh, las palabras interrogativas, the interrogative words are words that we always, uh, well, not always, we often use, right? Yes, no questions. You don't need an interrogative word when you build a question or ask a question. You know, if you just say, Hey, are you cooking this morning or are we cooking tonight or are we eating out? You know, you get a yes, no answer. Oh, we're cooking. We're eating out. You get a 50, 50 response to a yes, no question. You either get a yes or a no. Uh, but uh, many, many questions ask for more information. And those words that ask for more information we call in the grammar world, interrogatives, interrogativos, so question words, uh, the who, what, when, where, why that you learned a long time ago back in school when you talked about reporting or journalism, right? We got word like que, 
qual or quales. We're going to base uh, uh, a little lesson maybe next week <coughs> on that the difference between que and qual, que and qual, which may not sound like mm, it's a big deal, but um, it's something that kind of helps you to communicate easier, knowing when to use que and when to use qual, because people can get very confused in English. Que is generally for what, and qual generally is translated as which, but sometimes we really use qual, where in English we would use what. So we'll look at that uh, a little bit next week, but not today specifically. But que, qual, or cuales, cuales being the plural question word, right? Quien or quienes. Right. Again, we have a singular and a plural. Uh, notice a, some of the question words, but not all. Some have plural forms. Not most of them, but a few. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Then we want to como, how, donde, where, cuando, when. Uh, more, a little more specific than cuando. A que hora? A que hora? At what time? And that gets answered with an a ah, less and a number uh, or an a ah, la if it's the, the one o'clock hour, right? Um, a las dos at two o'clock, a las cuatro at four o'clock, a las ocho at eight o'clock, etc. Um, uh, our cuanto, how much? And our cuantos or cuantas in a plural form, it means not how much, but how many. Y por qué? Why? And we get some little uh, variations that happen with some of these. Like, donde, donde, uh, the donde word might morph a little bit into something like uh, a donde, if we use it with a verb of motion, or de donde, uh, right? We'll. Uh, Try to squeeze that in, or, ooh, or maybe we can just expand that. Ah, sí, mejor. Aún mejor. Or de donde, from where, right? So sometimes these will morph a little bit, you know, like especially that donde word. Como doesn't morph or get changed around a lot, but donde might change to a donde or de donde, to where, Right with a verb of motion or de, de donde from where, uh, so okay, uh, those are some words you should keep in mind when we uh, uh, when we are asked questions or we want to ask questions, and we'll explore the que and the qual or cuales a little bit more next week. Uh, so. Uh, do keep in mind that those are things you'll probably be incorporating and you'll, uh, you'll see what the questions are a little bit later. Uh, vamos a comenzar con algo que se trata de, se trata de una comida. It's about a meal. Okay. Uh, or about food. Bien. Um, Um, vamos a ver. Uh, vamos a ver. We're going to watch a little video, uh, a very short video, algo muy corto. Mm. Un video de, a video of, <coughs> un video de unos cuatro minutos, cuatro minutos y treinta segundos, um, segundos, algo así, something about like that. Uh, I'm going to flip my video to the next session here. And this uh, is something we'll add a little extra information to, and you'll eventually go out and uh, maybe think about using this or incorporating some of these ideas into your breakout room in about maybe 10 or 15 minutes. Okay. A ver. Uy, momentito. I need to get all my screens lined up here. Perdón. Okay. 
Ella, uh, la, la mujer en el vídeo, the woman in the video, la mujer en el vídeo uh, se llama Ana y Ana tiene una serie de historias, stories, cuentos, stories uh, muy fáciles de entender, muy fáciles de entender. Y ella va a empezar hoy con un vídeo que se trata del desayuno. It's about breakfast, which is very timely for us. Uh, so I'm going to put on my audio y primero uh, ustedes van a escuchar. I may stop the video at a couple of places uh, just to kind of fill you in on a special word she's using or a special verb she's using, uh, but we'll let most of that roll on its own. Uh, Pueden ver Ana. Can you see Ana? Somebody give me an audio. Yeah, see. Sí. Yes. Sí, bien. Okay. Ella va a hablar. Uh, I'm going to leave the subtitles on so you can see those. In case you have um, maybe some problems with audio, you'll be able to get the, the, the uh, subtitles below as well. Hola. Hoy estoy en la cocina y voy a preparar el desayuno. Pues sí, hoy estoy en la cocina de mi piso. Es una cocina muy pequeña. No es una cocina grande. Es una cocina... Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I thought I had closed captions, but it's not giving me any. Okay. Most of these are very easy words. I will stop yeah. when she gets to one you don't get. Muy pequeña. Mira, esta es mi cocina. Wow. Es una cocina muy pequeña, ¿no? No. Wow. Oh, es una <laughs> cocina como ella tiene un piso. She has an apartment. In Spain, they call an apartment un piso. Piso means a floor in a building. Well, most apartments are built, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but in Mexico, in South America, you will not hear them using the word piscina or piso, piso for uh, an apartment. You'll hear apartamento, sounds like the English, or departamento. Uh, you'll hear one of those two words, but because she's, uh, she lives in Spain, she will call it un piso, but, pero, su cocina, una cocina pequeña, sí, como en un hotel, like in one of those long stay hotels. Es una mm -hmm. cocina muy pequeña. Tiene una hornilla pequeña. Una hornilla, an horno would be an oven, and she's really just got a heater plate, right? So, hornillo. Ah, sí. Tiene un fregadero. Fregadero es sink, kitchen sink, not the sink in your bathroom. Un fregadero. Fregar, el verbo fregar, fregar es scrub. So a fregadero, when I add an ero onto fregar, I make it into a noun, a place where you do this with your eating. Yeah, uh, um, fregadero, a uh, scrubbing basin. Uh, so in other words, this is your kitchen sink. Tiene armarios. Armarios, cupboards. Y también cajones. Cajones, drawers. You know, you pull out a drawer. Cajón, uh, the on on the end of cajón makes that thing bigger in size. A caja, C-A-J-A, -A, caja, una caja es box. Pero cajón, cajón, when we make it cajón, it means a drawer, something that slides out, okay? Marilyn? Uh, sí. Would you say the word for that sink and compare that to refrigerator? Oh, in my okay. mind, they sounded the same. Uh, you're going to have a video either. Well, you'll have a video eventually. I think it's going to wind up being uh, for like homework. Uh, um, there are many different words for refrigerator. 
Ah, fregadero, fregadero, frega, frega comes from fregar, scrub. Okay, fregadero, fregadero, fregadero uh, is the sink word, kitchen sink, okay? Refrigerator gets a whole bunch of different words. It changes regionally depending on the country and the region you're in. It might be nevera. Uh, it might be refrigerador, which they sometimes use. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, they might. Uh, yeah, refrigerador, una palabra muy larga. That's a really long word. Refrigerador. It's okay. like the English, but it's hard to pronounce. Refrigerador. Okay. Uh, a lot of people shorten that refrigerador to refri. Oh, refri. People call it a frigorifico, frigorifico. Some, yeah. Ah, uh, I like nevera. Yeah, <laughs> nevera, nevera is nice and short, uh, but which word you use for refrigerator, fridge, and in one video, you'll hear them use even the word for freezer, congelador. Um, you know, it depends kind of on the region you are in. So, okay. And she'll show you hers and she'll call it by the word that she typically uses. Y aquí está el frigorífico. Frigorífico. Uh, yet another one. Frigorífico. <laughs> It sounds like terrifico, <laughs> okay, magnifico, but it's frigorifico. But, you know, notice, you know, frigo, free, free, like from frio, woo, frio, frigorifico. She likes frigorifico. So, you know, you may hear five different words for fridge. Well, that's confusing, but you just have to roll with the punches, okay? Aquí. Y el congelador. Congelador, freezer. Congelador. Okay. Congelador. Yo voy a hacer el desayuno. Ah, voy a hacer, I'm going to make, voy a hacer el desayuno. Breakfast. Voy a coger un bol. Voy a coger un bol. Remember, coger only in Spain. Never, never on this side of the Atlantic. That coger is the big F-bomb word. <laughs> but Spaniards don't really care because they like to use coger. It doesn't mean the F-bomb word there at all. So uh, in, in Latino America, in Mexico, se dice tomar. Voy a tomar un bol. Voy a tomar un bol. I'm going to take a bowl, okay? But you'll hear her use coger a lot because for them it's super okay. Aquí está el bol. Y... Voy a coger los cereales. Uh, coger again, yeah. Arena. Tomar. Voy a tomar. Estos son los cereales. Una caja de cereales. Ahora voy a coger un yogur. Ah, voy a tomar un, un yogur. yogur. Y también un poco de miel. Aquí está la miel. Ah, un poco de miel. ¿Qué es miel? Oh. Honey. Que, honey. Si, sí, miel. Miel. Honey. And if you're on a honeymoon, it is. Si, sí, luna de miel. Moon of honey. Yeah. Honeymoon gets the same term in Spanish. Luna de miel. Moon of honey. Uh, miel. Honey. The actual food item. Ahora voy a coger una cuchara. Voy a tomar. I'm going to take yeah. una cuchara. Una cuchara. Y voy a poner el yogur en el bol. Ah, voy a poner, poner, put. And we're going to see, curiously, a different word that people may use instead of poner. Okay, poner, put. Place something. She's going to place yogurt, put yogurt inside the bowl. Voy a poner, I'm going to put. Voy a poner. Is it translated as a pour as well? Perdón? Voy a poner can be translated as a pour into, pouring it uh, into. Oh, poner. Uh, it could be if it were a liquid thing. 
Yeah, it mm -hmm. could be. Could be. So, so you can it, use that. If it's a liquid thing, you can use that. Voy a poner, voy a poner, voy a poner agua para mi té. I'm okay. going to put in water for my tea. Sure. Sí, sí, claro, sí. Pongo los cereales en el yogur. Y uh, fíjense, notice, pongo, now she's changed it from voy a poner, I'm going to put, to I'm putting. Right. And if we're using poner by itself, uh, they can say, notice the yo form is the only oddball, irregular, the only irregular form we use for poner. Pongo gets a go at the end just because it Pongo. does. Just that, yeah. A few verbs in Spanish get that go at the end. Instead of just an o for the yo form, it's a go. Pongo, poner, P O N E R. We take off the ER, but the yo form gets a go instead of just an O. Kind of like tengo gets a go, okay? A few verbs get that go ending just for yo. Así está bien. Y ahora pongo un poco de miel en los cereales. Un poco es a little bit, a little bit, right? Uh, a little bit. Un poco de miel. Un poco de miel. A little bit of honey. Solo un poco. Y ahora lo mezclo. Lo ah, mezclo. lo mezclo. Uh, I. I mix it, mezclar, mezclar es to mix, mezclar, y se escribe M-E-Z-C-L-A-R, M-E-Z, like in zebra, M-E-Z-C-L-A-R, mezclar, mezclar, I mix it, mezclo. Todo. Y para beber, quiero una taza de té. Aquí están las tazas. And she used quiero una taza. And some of you have not seen quiero. Many of you have. Some of you haven't. We'll get a quick lesson on quiero uh, a little bit later after breakout room. She, you're going to hear her using some. Uh, there are, are some regular verbs like mezclo. There are some irregular verbs only for yo like pongo. There are some stem changing verbs like quiero, I want. Quiero. So we're going to take part of our class today to talk again and revisit some stem changing verbs, what they are, what they do, and use them. Okay. Quiero, quiero te. I want tea, she said. Voy a usar esta taza y el té está aquí. El té en está este aquí. Cajón. Ah, el té está en el cajón. The tea is in the drawer. Hoy voy a beber té negro. La bolsita. Voy a, oh, voy, voy, a, voy a beber té negro. I'm going to drink what kind of tea? Black, Black tea. tea. Black tea, té negro. La bolsita de té está en la taza. Y ahora voy a usar el hervidor de agua. Herba, hervidor de agua. Yeah. Hervidor. Hervir means to boil. Oh. So that's a little device. Notice when we talk about gadgets, machines, devices, <laughs> quite often they might end in an ero, E-R-O, or a dor, D-O-R. And it means... Oh some kind of gadget that does that job. Hervir es to boil. Hervidor is a boiler, but not a boiler like you use for like, you know, remember if you're of a certain age, uh, you know, the school mm -hmm. had a boiler room. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if, yeah. You gotta no. be, you gotta be kind of like, you know, yeah. On the upside yeah. of that age you have to remember that, but not that kind of boiler, but um, uh, you know, some people might use it, a, uh, say that's a cafetera, a coffee maker, but that really doesn't oh. make coffee because it doesn't percolate Tea. it. Yeah. So this is just to boil water. 
uh, for hot drinks. Hervidor, a boiler, or something that boils water. Mm -hmm. Voy a poner agua en el hervidor. Voy a poner, I'm going to. And there, uh, there you see, uh, yes, because she's pouring a liquid in. Voy a poner agua. Ah, bien. Yeah. So whether it's a dry ingredient or a wet ingredient, you can use poner. Voy a poner yeah. agua. Y ahora enciendo el hervidor. Enciendo. Encender. Sounds like incendiary. Oh, incendiary devices are very bad. They set things on fire, yeah? Incendiary bombs. Yeah. Encender is to turn on something that's Encender. electric or to light Encender. something. Like if you were lighting a campfire, you know, setting something on fire. Enciendo, I turn on. I plug it in and I turn it on. Encend Enciendo. Enciendo is used for electric devices when you turn them on. Ahora tengo que esperar. Oh, tengo que esperar. Esperar es to wait. To wait. Tengo que uh -huh. esperar. I uh -huh. have to wait. Voy a tirar. Voy a tirar el vaso del... Oh, Voy a tirar en, ah, en envase, okay. sí. Uh, voy a tirar. Open, tirar open. es throw uh, out. Throw out. To, 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 uh, oh. Discard. Get rid of. Toss. Toss. Tirar. Yogur. Tirar. T-I-R. Tirar. T-I-R-A-R. Tirar. T-I-R-A-R. Tirar. To throw out. And tirar means to throw something like across the room or to throw something out. Get rid of it. Yeah? Basura. En la basura. In the trash. El agua del hervidor ya está hirviendo. Está hirviendo. It's boiling. Está Ahora hirviendo. echo el agua en la taza. Oh, she didn't use poner. Shoot. <laughs> Okay, voy a echar, voy a echar. We're going to get a little, sorry, we had a blip with Zoom here. You can all hear me, see? Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, I think I have to restart the share. Yeah. And, perdón, sorry about that. Zoom did a hiccup. Ooh, and it even booted my sound out. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, she used echar. Now, in this case, she used echar instead of poner. Poner means to put. Echar, echar is kind of like tirar. Echar. Uh, to throw. But echar is one of those unusual verbs in Spanish that has many meanings that are different meanings, depending on the use. And echar can be used to indicate that you add something into. Mm. Yeah. Instead of saying adding or, oh, kind of like, you know how some of you say, well, I'll toss a little bit of this in. I'll toss in a handful of this. That's the job that echar has here. Echar does literally mean to throw. Like tirar can mean to throw, but echar doesn't really generally mean to throw away. <clears throat> it means you're put throw in something. Okay. So how you, how you do, how you spell it? H H E C H A R. Is that how? C E the C H together, which makes the ch sound, right? Yeah. Echar. E C H A R. Mm -hmm. E C H A R. Echar. Echar. Okay, can you see her cup again? Sí. Yes. Pueden yes. ver la, la taza? Sí. Can you guys see the cup? Sí? Bien. Sí. Okay. Sí. We're going to let sí. her finish up. We're almost at the end. Mm -hmm. Y ya está listo mi desayuno. Okay. Un desayuno en España es una comida pequeña. Uh, breakfast in Spain, particularly is generally quite light. Uh, uh, it is quite a, a light affair. If you go to Mexico, in Mexico, uh, tacos is not an unusual thing to have for breakfast. 
Eh, entonces el desayuno depende mucho en el país, right? Uh, the, the breakfast that would be typical uh, really depends on the country you are in. Mm. Muy rico. ¿Y a ti qué te gusta desayunar? Cuéntamelo en los comentarios. Oh, she said, cuéntamelo. And cuéntamelo is another stem changer that we're going to review. Uh, cuéntamelo means tell me about it. And mm. it doesn't mean just say a couple words. It means tell me a little, little short story. So, uh, algo breve, sí, okay. So we're going to put that down. Uy, okay, we're going to take that off of share. Um, vamos a ver, you did hear one very, very odd verb used. Um, and that was echar. And wow, uh, uh, that was a verb you probably did not expect to hear. But we're going to tell you a little bit about that verb echar because you're going to use it soon in breakout rooms. Uh, and I'm not going to show you all of this video. So I'm going to tell you guys this. When I send you the email with this particular link for this next snippet uh, of a video, because we won't listen to the whole thing. If you're a beginner student and you want to listen to this again, because you get the link for this in the email after class, you probably only want to listen to part of it, but don't get alarmed if you find it difficult or impossible to understand everything in the whole video. For those of you who are a little higher level, you probably want to watch the whole video. Okay. So kind of, you know, uh, assess how much of this video you want to watch depending on your level and, and it's okay. And I even will have to fiddle around a little bit for which parts I want. We're going to hear a little bit about this verb echar, echar, which I spelled for you, E-C-H-A-R, -E -E echar, literally, literally the first definition you will see if you look it up in a dictionary is to throw. So, you know, echo una pelota, I throw a ball, you know. Um, echar can literally mean throwing something. But echar is one of those odd words in Spanish that has many, many uses depending on the context. So because we're going to be talking about food, adding into food, we're going to listen to one interesting use of echar, which is going to become kind of like poner, a little bit like poner. But do know that echar, and you'll see in the beginning of this video, it says 10 different uses. Ooh, perdón, I need to take the, put that back on. Echar gets many, many different <laughs> depending on the context in which it is used. And we're just going to check out maybe one or two of these. Okay. And for this... Yes. Número uno. Echarle algo a otra cosa. To throw something into something else. And that is literally what it means. Echar means to throw, but many, many times, if you use it with food, it does not mean food fight. It is not animal house, people throwing food. Echar used with food means you're tossing in a little bit of this, meaning you're adding something into the mix. So uh, you are going to experiment a little bit with echar in breakout rooms to talk about adding in something to another food item, okay? And you might say in English really just I add or I pour in or I put in or I toss in a little bit of, yeah? Pick, pick the meaning in English. To add something on something else. O sea, por ejemplo, yo digo, por favor, no le eches azúcar a mi café. 
ah, uh-uh. and here mm-hmm. she turned it into a command. Don't worry about that. But mm-hmm. you see how they use a chat. And I know it's got an EF. That's because it's a, a negative command. Uh, please don't okay. put sugar in my coffee. Por favor, no le eches azúcar a mi café. Uh, you may be wondering, why do we have that little word le? Uh, it's just there. It's kind of like a hangnail. Think of this as a, le is your hangnail for the day. No le mm. eches azúcar. You could take out that little word le and it's still okay. Okay. So you don't have to have that little word le. No le eches azúcar. Hey, don't toss any, don't toss any sugar in my coffee. Don't add any sugar to my coffee. Don't put in any, don't sprinkle any. Okay. You get the idea. You're so tossing. The over there is for, it's just for, uh, to be polite. So if you say uh, that you can take off that thing. No, it's not really. Um, it's not polite. Although I see why you're asking that. It's not a te word, is it? Um, it's, Think of it as a hangnail. You could take that lay out and somebody still totally knows what you mean. Okay. It's a, a little, uh, some people will use that. Um, okay. It doesn't really translate into anything if you're translating it uh, into okay. English. Okay. Sí. No le eches azúcar. Don't put sugar on my coffee. Otro ejemplo. El pescado sabe mejor. Si le echas limón. And the sabe there doesn't mean the sabe of no, it means taste. Uh, because we do have saber and as a separate verb that also means to taste something. El pescado sabe mejor. Oh, fish tastes better. Yeah, si le echas limón. If you add a little lemon. Of lemon. Lemon, yeah. And you can say it without the le word and people still totally get it. Okay, this lady is from Colombia. So in Colombia, they use the le a lot, but you may not, you don't have to use the le to get that meaning of toss in a little, throw in a little, add a little. Fish tastes better if you add lemon to it. Entonces, hablamos de echar azúcar, echar sal, echar limón. Echar hielo, etc. Okay, so what kind of things are you adding with this? Echar azúcar, add lemon, sugar, sugar. sugar. echar sal, you're lemon. adding salt. 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 salt, salt, echar limón, you're adding lemon, lemon. lemon. okay, echar hielo, you're adding, ooh, the harder ice. one, ice, ice. ice. Yeah. yeah, ice, you're adding ice. Vamos para el número dos. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm trying to remember if dos es is where she has. Echar a oh, alguien. No, we don't want that one yet. I'm going to see if I can pinpoint her next use. A chat is used in a whole bunch of. So here's the other literal meaning because the literal to meaning. Throw. To throw. Okay. So we're going to look at only at those two meanings, but if you want to see a whole bunch more, you can watch the whole video at a later date outside of class. I'll send you the link for this. So echar in its most original meaning means to Numero throw. Cuatro. To throw something. Echar. Echar piedras al río. Throw rocks into the river. Throw stones into the river. Oh. Echar algo en la basura. Uh, throw something in the garbage can. Okay, echar so that's, la that's the literal echar. All right. Es un verbo regular. This is a regular verb. Conjugates just like all the other AR verbs. Uh, echar algo a la basura. Uh, throwing something. So it can mean throw. It means to add in when you talk about your food. Yeah, adding an ingredient into the food. Adding an ingredient. It's muy común decir algo como echa ese pan en la basura. Ya no sirve. Hey, toss that bread in the garbage. It's no good anymore. It does not serve. It no longer serves. Ya no sirve. In the longer serves means it's turned bad. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. 
perdón. Ya, yeah. sorry about that. We, oh, perdón. Okay, so uh, echar is also a synonym for to toss something, to get rid of it. And I'm sorry, we had another little blip there. Just make sure we're still recording. Yes, we are. Okay, bien. Una pregunta, I, I saw a hand up. Uh, una pregunta, or a couple hands up. Sí. Dígame. Uh, let's take, sí, Hillary first, sí. Sorry, I was wondering what the ya yeah is. So I've seen <gasps> it in lingo. Yeah. That word that, okay, it probably means it, but does it ever change? Uh, or Ya yeah changes a lot. Okay. Ya, ya, sadly, might mean 10 different things. Uh, <laughs> ya, ya okay. no, uh, but, ooh, but you saw it as ya no. And ya no means no longer or not anymore. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ah, so it ah, doesn't fit. Por ejemplo, por ejemplo, for example, um, uh, somebody walks up to you or uh, somebody walks up to you, you're just finishing a meal. They say that you're eating. Ah, eh, ah, estás comiendo. Are you eating right now? Ah, no, no, no te preocupes. Ya no, not anymore. Ya no, not anymore. Uh, ya no sirve. It's no, it doesn't serve for anything anymore, meaning it's no good anymore. It's, it's past its due date, <laughs> you know, it's gone bad. Ya no sirve, it, it has gone bad. So does it translate to it or it, there's no translation to the word? Ya, ya might mean now, ya no would mean not anymore or no longer. Ya sometimes means enough already. In enough. Ya. Somebody just looks at a kid and goes, ya. It means stop it. Okay. Stop it, kid. Ya. Uh, ya might mean right now. Right now. Ah, ya boy, I'm coming right now. Ya yeah, has many. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll look more at ya next yeah, week. Yeah, that looks kind of yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ya is very confusing. And Mexicans laugh about ya all the time when uh, Americans get confused by ya. We'll, we'll look more at ya next week. Buena pregunta, Hillary. See? Sí? Okay, Liz, uh, Liza, perdón, Liza, tienes otra. Yes. Yes, um, y, y Charl, y Charl. I didn't understand the meaning of that. Echar? Well, with the L-E. Um, oh, echarle. Mm -hmm. She uses it with a le, but you may hear it without the word le. Okay. No, it seemed like it was connected to the word echarle. Well, yes. Echarle, if you see it in a dictionary, if you looked it up in a dictionary, they would tag the le on the end. Okay. okay, if uh, if we use a chat by itself, that little le, that little hangnail, <laughs> yeah, doesn't have a lot. It doesn't have a lot of meaning by itself in this particular case. Would come before, but if we use it as the infinitive, it gets attached. You're going to use it as a chat, like hecho. I put in hechas. Do you put in hecha? She puts in. He puts in. Echamos. We put in. Yeah. Echan, they put in. You're just going to use it in that way. Okay. okay. And you can forget about the le or, you know, you can use the le if you want, but right. you don't have to. Okay. Otra pregunta. Another question. No? Nada? Okay. Thank you. De nada. De nada. Okay. Uh, vamos a ver. We're going to see. I am going to show you the various questions and you're going to see these questions when you go into breakout room okay uh we're going to talk about breakfast time uh we're going to talk about breakfast time and y a ver aquí tenemos las preguntas here we've got the questions so you know what you're talking about can you see the questions on the screen pueden ver si sí? Sí. 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 bien okay vale uh, and I want you to notice we are combining some question words. 
really we're only using two different kinds in this particular case, uh, que and cuanto. Uh, but you're going to use these questions to have a little conversation with your partners in breakout room, right? Uh, que comes de desayuno? What do you eat for breakfast? Uh, some people eat hot breakfast, some people eat cold breakfast, some people don't eat breakfast at all. You know, you might fall anywhere in that spectrum. Que comes de desayuno? What do you eat? So I want somebody in your group to ask the question in Spanish and somebody to answer the question in Spanish and ask a few people. You'll be in groups of three or four, never bigger than four. Okay. Uh, when you answer that question, you've got to change it into a como. I eat, right? When you answer it, okay? A two verb question like comes, do you eat? Gets changed into a yo, como verb when you answer, right? Que comes. So you're gonna have to insert an item, insert a food item there, okay? Um, la segunda pregunta, second question. Cocinas para el desayuno o no cocinas? Do you cook for breakfast or do you not cook? If you do that cereal alternative and it's cold, you don't cook. Okay? Bien. Uh, ¿Qué bebes por la mañana? What do you drink? Drink in the morning. Por la mañana. ¿Qué bebes por la mañana? ¿Qué bebes por la mañana? What do you drink in the morning? Ah, and here comes our new word. ¿Qué echas en la bebida? What do you put into? What do you put into your drink? Azúcar, leche, crema. ¿Qué echas? Well, what do you what do you toss in? Miel, honey. Uh, bien, okay. Uh, a ver. Uh, and e e a. Ah. Momentito, momentito. If you want to add this echar a little bit into your first question, you can. Por ejemplo, for example. Como huevos, I eat eggs. Como huevos, uh, y echo sal. And I add a little salt. salt. Okay. Salt. So you can embellish uh, a little if you like. Uh, okay. Uh, que no comes nunca de desayuno. Uh, what do you Never eat for breakfast. Yeah. What item do you never eat for breakfast? Sí. Sí. Ah, que no comes nunca. Que no comes nunca is what do you never eat? Yeah. Uh, si desayunas en un restaurante, if you eat breakfast in a restaurant and notice... We can use desayunas as, as eating breakfast, that specific meal. It is a verb that means you eat that specific meal. Si desayunas en un restaurante, ¿a dónde vas? Where do you go? go. ¿A dónde vas? Where do you go? And our last one, we're going to get one special uh, interrogative, the how much interrogative, cuánto, cuánto, how much, cuánto cuesta, how much does it cost, cuánto cuesta comer eh, el desayuno en un restaurante, how much does it cost to eat breakfast at a restaurant, típicamente, typically, sí, bien, Okay, I want you to go into your groups and practice asking those questions. Uh, vamos a ver. Okay, and I, perdón, bear with me here because I need to assign people in this into rooms. Ooh, a donde fue? Where did my... 
handy. Oh, here's my handy dandy little breakout room notes. So any questions you've got right now, I would love for you to not raise your hand because I've got to look about three different ways. I have a quick question. Si, dígame, tell me while uh, I'm plugging these in. Morning and tomorrow is the same? Ay, qué buena pregunta. What a good question that is. Si, uh, the same, yeah, when I saw mañana, I'm like, okay, that's tomorrow, but then yet it was used in the morning. What do you eat? Right. The si, eso es. That is correct. Okay. Um, la mañana. When you have it with the word la, la mañana, uh, then la mañana is morning. Okay. La mañana is morning. Eh? Qué buena pregunta. What a good question that is. Sí, exacto. Um, por la mañana is in the morning. Por la mañana. Uh, bien. Uh, hay uh -huh. otra pregunta. Other questions. Shout it out. Buenos. I think once you said black coffee, it's not neg negro. It's so... <gasps> Okay, buena pregunta. What a good question that is. If you're talking about black tea, because that is the actual, how do I explain that? That is the actual variety of tea. Uh, they will say te negro. Te negro is perfectly okay. All right. Um, but, but uh, when we get into the issue of black coffee, um, they do something else. And um, black coffee becomes uh, café solo, okay. café solo. Think of it as, you know, a person who is learning to fly does a solo flight. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because, you know, they have never done that on their own before. Uh, but, uh, you know, cafe solo is that coffee flying alone. Uh, <laughs> think of it as the coffee flying alone. That is what it does. Uh, yeah, momentito. I am almost done with my thing here. A ver. Y momentito. Okay. Bueno. All right. Uh, bien. Otra pregunta. Any other question? Sí o no? No? Okay. Uh, I'm going to leave you about seven minutes to talk. Sí? Any questions on any vocab, like breakfast food vocabulary you need before you go into rooms or no? Yes. Okay. Dime. Tell me. Um, sausage? Sausage. Ooh. Um, oh, ooh, there are many different things. You can use chorizo, chorizo, oh. or salchicha. Salchicha. Kind of depends on the type of sausage it is. Salchicha. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are a bunch of different words for sausages depending on how it is. Okay. Uh, algo más. Anything else? No? Okay. Bien. All right, I'm going to open this up. After you all hit your join button, I will be able to send the, you the questions into your room. So now you should see a join button. And you should pop that puppy. Hit your join button. Oh, and I'm just double checking here to make sure I've got enough people. Okay, I've got two in that one group. Uh, bien. Okay, Linda, that's okay. Uh, a ver. Sorry, that's my No, fault. no, no, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure that that group had more yeah, than I two people in it. Should have texted or that's fine. as soon as it happened. No te preocupes, yeah. no worries. Don't even worry about it. 
Uh, a ver, ok, now I'm going to send them the things in the room. Uy, a ver. Share, ok. Now they should see that. ¿Quieres practicar? You want to practice with me a little bit, sí o no? No. I no, have, ok. I haven't slept since we got the call. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ok, está bien. I just didn't want to miss class today. Ok. But I did register. Okay. Um, before okay. class. So if you want me to send you the receipt. No. I can always look at that stuff later. It's just that I, I do literally get people who sign up minutes before class starts. So I always check it like minutes right. before. Right. And then I send my stuff out because. I And I appreciate it. I just forgot. I forgot to register. I kept telling myself, no, oh, I'll no, do it tomorrow. No te preocupes. Not to worry. See? Ah, bien, 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 bien. Y eh, el perrito se llama Bear, ¿sí? Sí. Um, oso, Bear, Oso. What, that was his name when we got him. It's not a name we would have picked, but. <laughs> He's used to it now. Yeah, I mean, he's six or seven. Oh, so. Qué precioso y necesita, necesita una casa, un, necesita un hogar. He needs a home. Necesita un hogar. Y ahora tiene hogar. And now he's got a home. He, we hope. Espere, sí. Um, no. Mi gatos no gusta. Ah, entonces uh, tienen que, que acostumbrarse sí. al perro. Los gatos tienen que acostumbrarse al perro. Los gatos tienen que acostumbrarse. They have to get used to. Have to. Sí, uh, sí. no. Uh, Ahora no son amigos. No, no amigos. Todavía no son amigos. They're, they're, they're not yet friends. Todavía no son amigos. Sí, ya, ya sí. Ok. Muy difícil. Es difícil. Uh, y hay, hay que tener paciencia, ¿no? Hay que tener paciencia. There? Uh, bear, bear, uh, likes to chase. I could oh, le, gu le gusta, le gusta, he likes, le gusta, le gusta perseguir, 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 pursue, perseguir y, y, y jugar, jugar y perseguir a, a los gatos, sí. Es normal, sí. Sí. Uh, es normal. Mi gatos no gusta. Ah, no les gusta. No les gusta. Sí, sí. Uh, I don't know how to say, like, being chased. Sí. Nah. No le... Ah, sí. Uh, más, es más fácil decir, no les gusta jugar con el perro. No les gusta jugar. They don't like this playing. Sí. sí. No les gusta jugar con el perro. Sí, hay que tener paciencia y los gatos tienen que acostumbrarse al, al perro nuevo. Y, y bueno, tarda, tarda mucho tiempo. It takes a lot of time a veces, ¿sí? Es, es difícil, ¿sí? Eh, ah, no eh, eh, no, no, no es un proceso. Es un proceso. Sí, es un proceso sí, sí, um, gradual. Sí. Y, sí. y tarda, tarda semanas, tarda meses a veces. Meses. It can take weeks, tarda meses. It can take months. Meses. Pero uh, sí, no es instantáneo. No, no, no. El, la, la, la. Um, la, I can't think of the word. Hold on. Um, recusa? Lechusa? Um, des, 
hace dos veces. The Rescue. Oh, Rescate. Suggested, rescate. Suggested that we should consider giving him back if. Ah. If, si no funciona. They'll si. take him back after two months if he's ah. if not able to live with them. Ah. Yeah. Which would break oh. our hearts, but. Oh, sí. Espero que no. Espero que no. I hope not. Okay. Uh, and I don't know. Liz, are you on the line with me or no? I have reassigned her. There we go. She got in the group. Okay. I'm looking at a million things. I think, okay. <laughs> do what you need to do. I'm just hanging out. No, no, no. Her. Está bien. She's good. I can see she's in the, in, in the separate room. So somebody must have popped out of her room and she needed reassignment. That's okay. Or, or it just bumped her out. That happens too sometimes. Okay. Dos minutos más. We've got two more minutes that I'm going to let people converse a little bit and then we'll bring them back. A ver. Okay. Y bueno, entonces, um, eh, este perro, Linda, este perro nuevo, uh, ya tenía familia. He had a family. He had, uh, sí. tenía familia. Uh, Pero ya no, but not anymore. Familia, no, no. Um, uno hombre. Um, in a wheelchair? I don't know how to say wheelchair. Oh, silla de ruedas. Sí. Um, pero my, my, my butt and my dog sound the same but ah. <laughs> pero pero um hombre no no puede cuidar al perro sí no puede cuidar you can't take no care no puede cuidar al perro right entiendo um, es normal sí así es so it is uh pero a bear um Though gusta, no, le gusta. Le gusta. Le gusta, pe, bear, al perro, bear. Le gusta mucho radar in um, nos, I don't know how to say fool. Regar is to water, to put water on something, like from so a he hose. He really likes to swim in the pool. Oh, nadar. Sí, si, nadar. Nadar, nadar right. en, el, en la piscina. Nadar en la piscina. Bien, 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 bien. Sí, si, nadar en la piscina. Es, ah, sí, si le gusta mucho nadar. Ah, eso es excelente. Muy, ay, fan, qué fantástico, qué fantástico. Ok. A ver, ok, I'm going to bring people out of breakout. Uy, momentito. Okay, I'm going to meet myself again. Sí, 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 momentito. Uh, and we're going to close rooms and let people gradually come back in. I had to take them off of share. Okay, bien, bien. Aquí vienen todos. Here comes everybody. Qué excelente. Ok. Bueno, um, vamos a repasar un poquito. We've got most people coming back in. I'm going to wait until we got the whole big group. Uh, we, we use this little time to regroup and talk about any questions you had about, you know, oh, I was trying to say this, but I didn't know how or... Anything you might have had difficulty with? Across the street. If I eat across the street. At oh, a restaurant, at a restaurant. En un restaurante, 
Uh, 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 frente, frente a mi casa. A frente a mi casa uh, means facing my house across the street. Oh, if it's right frente, across. Mi frente a mi casa. Frente a mi casa because it's facing. Okay. Frente, frente, sí, facing. Frente. <laughs> Buena pregunta. You said frente de mi casa? Frente de mi casa means facing my house. Yeah, which okay. In front of your house. Yeah, sí, sí. Buena pregunta. Good question. Ah, Okay. Uh, uh, see, um, so just to kind of double check us, but we were trying to say like, how often or how much do you cook breakfast? Ooh. So was that a cuantro, a, a cuantro cocinar de semiano? Oh, how often? Like, like how often or how much do you cook breakfast? Con, yes, cuant was, con cuanta but, frecuencia? How frequently? Con cuan, yeah. There are a few different ways to express it, but probably the easiest one for you right now would be con cuanta frecuencia or, or, or cuantas veces, cuantas veces a la semana. Uh, cuantas veces. I'll, I'll show you a little bit of this. There are uh, actually a few different ways to say how often. Es buena pregunta. That's a good question. Um, uh, because sometimes we do want to ask how often you do something. And there are probably like three or four ways people may ask that. So mm -hmm. I'm going to give you like two of the easiest ones. Ooh. So the, quant the, the quanto that I was thinking was the how much, but that actually is really more um, well, de narrow than it is. Well, no. Quanto, of how many yeah. Times. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, if, if it is like, you know, how many pieces of bacon, how many eggs, then it, yeah, then it will oh, be cuantos huevos, okay. right. Depende, it depends. Um, uh, um, uh, cuantas veces, uh, por ejemplo, a mm -hmm. la semana. Um, so <laughs> how many times nice. per week, you know, kind of how often. Or, uh, uh, con qué, con qué frecuencia, uh, how frequently, right? How frequently, how often, right? Uh, and there are a few others, but I don't want to kind of overburden you with too many choices on that for now. Okay. So, cuántas veces, cuántas veces cocina, how many times, y cuántas veces a la semana, how many times a week, that kind of thing. Okay. Bien. Can you, can you say, uh, say again uh, across the street? Frente a, frente a, facing, frente a, frente a mi casa, facing my, facing my house. Right, literally across the street. See, okay. Uh, bueno, Cindy, Cindy, de nada. Si, sí, Cindy, this is I'm going over something old and I'm not quite sure about it. When I was okay. trying to uh, me encant uh, be una bebidas uh, in la mañana, me encanta cafe, but I said e agua. So, do I have to change that? Me encantan. If you want to say, uh, me encanta, me encanta el café. Y agua. Y agua. Y agua. Ah, mm, um, ooh, me, me encanta. Sí, ooh. No, probably you're just going to hear me encanta. Me encanta el café. Y el agua. You're just going to hear encanta in most, for most people. Me encanta beber. Me encanta beber el café y el agua. Okay. Así. Okay. Bien. Buena pregunta. Okay. ¿Qué más? ¿Qué más? I know plurals, but usually when you're adding something in, people are going to keep it as me encanta. Yeah. Marilyn, would you talk about por oh. and para? You there was para in some questions and por mm -hmm. el diferente at some not today necessarily, but at some point. Sí, sí. Uh, I won't do that today, but I'll do it another time. Often, often, uh, que Que, que, tom, uh, que comes de desayuno? What do you eat as your breakfast routine? Co que comes de? But often people will use para for, meaning, you know, I eat this, I drink this for breakfast. People may use either one. That's the short answer to that. Sí, bien. Okay. Y ahí otra pregunta. Uh, was it uh, Tom? Or, uh, sí. sí, sí. Oh, Tomás, sí. 
Uh, uh, it's a pronunciation question. So sí, sí. I was using Simalas de Chia. Otra vez, again. Simalas de Chia. Simalas? S-E-M-I-L-L-A-S. Oh, semillas. Mm. semillas. Perdón, semillas. Semillas. Semillas, semillas. Vamos a ver. Uh, semillas son seeds, S-E-E-D-S. Y se pronuncia así, seeds. Uh, perdón, wow. Seeds. Uh, las semillas. Uh, las semillas. Se, mi, and it'll sound like millas. Millas. It'll sound like that. Semillas. 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 Seeds. Seeds. Eso es. Sí. Muy bien. Muy bien. Otra pregunta. Another question. Sí o no? No? Nada? Okay. Ok. Uh, a ver, bueno. Uh, muy bien. Uh, de tarea, as homework, because I want to take a, a little different topic. A uh, little different topic. As homework, I'm going to give you uh, a couple of videos to watch. Uh, one uh, is going to be talk, people talking about what's in their fridge, and you're going to hear all kinds of different oh, words. <laughs> For fridge. Yeah, refrigerator. Okay. So uh, as kind of a follow up to this, you're going to get the what's in my fridge and they're going to ask what's in your fridge. Que está en el refrigerador, que está en la nevera, que está en el frigorífico, que está en el refri. You know, yeah, they're going to ask all those different variations. And uh, one of the things that a lot of Uh, that where you find a great deal of variation in Spanish is food vocabulary. Mm -hmm. So the exact same food item, like you're going to see eggplants. So I'm going to, uh, yeah, <laughs> you're going to notice a lot of people have eggplant because this is a thing. And, you know, like I, here in the States, you don't really have like, you know, everybody doesn't buy eggplant. Uh, but you're even going to see in the translations when you turn on the closed captions, they're going to call it uh, aubergine or, you know, they're mm -hmm. going to call it different words, but you're going to see it as like, that's an eggplant. Okay. You'll, you'll see different words for that. You'll hear different words for fridge. Just know that quite often, depending on the country you're in, words for the same exact food item may change. And you're going to notice that particularly besides the word for refrigerator, also the word for strawberry will change depending on the country people are in. So just kind of make a mental note of that. Um, you're going to get a second video, which is going to talk about um, Uh, what you like, you know, whether you like to cook and what you like to cook. So a couple of food oriented things. So these are things you can listen to um, at, at your leisure. And uh, it's always a good idea to uh, listen to more and more videos. I'm going to give you a little quick rundown. Um, oh, perdón. I need to pause that. Uh, I just want to make sure I show you so that you know if you're not super handy with uh, controls on YouTube. Uh, when you get to controls on YouTube, this CC box will turn on closed captions, meaning subtitles. And the gear box down here, if people are talking too fast for you, I would say, Click on the gearbox, then click on playback speed. And I would say slow it down to 0.75. But I would say no slower, because if you slow it beyond 0.75, it's going to start to sound like molasses coming out <laughs> of the bottle. And that will drive you crazier than them listening to them at a normal speed. So Two control buttons you'll want to know for listening to YouTube things, the CC, meaning your subtitles button, and your gear button, which can slow things down a little bit if you need to. Often also when you listen to a video, folks, 
Uh, don't feel, don't pressure yourselves, put yourself in the pressure cooker of, I must understand everything perfectly after listening to it once, because that is not going to happen <laughs> for a lot of people. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. It was very normal. I, I would say, let it roll and just listen for the very big ideas, the very most general ideas the first time. The second time you try to fill in some of the blanks that you didn't get. Okay. And the third time you listen, yep, that's usually what it takes. Um, You know, you try to fill in yet a few more of the blanks. Uh, But you'll have some videos related to talking about food. Okay, studying. Uh, Bueno, vamos a ver. Uh, I want to, I want us to revisit a grammar topic. We're kind of leaving our vocabulary world to to talk a little bit about uh, revisiting and practicing again, a grammar topic called stem changing verbs. Wow. Some of you have seen that before. Some of you are like, what is a stem changing verb? I've never even seen one, but you have Lo and behold, yes, indeed. Even if you don't know what a stem changing verb is, by God, you've seen it. So, okay, there you go. Um, What we're going to take a look at, though, and I'm trying to find a handy dandy quick and easy. You heard people saying, cuéntame with a U-E in there. Cuéntame. Uh, and cuéntame means tell me a story. It means tell me all about it. Not tell me one or two words, but tell me all about it. So we're going to revisit this word of, a world of stem changing verbs. You have had besides that, besides that, you have also had, uy, donde esta? Of course, when I need it, I don't have it. You have had the verb tener. Mm-hmm. Right. Everybody has had the verb tener, tener to have, and tener gets a stem change it, when we use it in the sense of tienes, tiene, ellos tienen. Okay. Uh, so stem changing verbs, you have all seen them in some way, shape, or form. Here's another very famous, ooh, high frequency word, querer, to want. Also, it can mean to love, but often means to want something. Um, And some changing verbs always have one vowel (laughs) that splits off into a double it splits and becomes two vowels next to each other, or, well, sometimes one, okay? So it happens for most of the verb forms that the stem-changing verb is conjugated for, but not 100% all of them. Uh, It happens for all of the conjugated forms except for nosotros never gets a stem change, and vosotros never gets a stem change, okay? So we're gonna take a quick look at the first category. Ooh, actually, I'm gonna find you my little notes so that you don't have to like furiously copy stuff. Uh, We don't want you furiously copying things while you're on Zoom. This is the, these are the notes that you will get. And you're going to get a couple of, of videos as well. Mm-hmm. Some changing verbs means that a vowel in the middle of the verb, not at the end, but in the middle gets, it splits. So there are three categories of these. Oh, and you know what? Perdon. I think I've got actually the wrong. Yeah, here we go. Aquí. Here we go. Stem changing verbs. There are three categories, and that means three Mm. types of stem changes that may happen. Now, all verbs don't have stem changes. You know, cocinar, cocinar, to cook, does not have a stem change. Mezclar, to mix, does not have a stem change. Echar, yeah, to add an ingredient or to throw something, does not have a stem change. Uh, uh, 
preparar, to prepare does not have a stem change. So you just have to know which verbs are in that category we call stem changing verbs. You have to gradually become accustomed to, oh, that is this type of verb. So anyway, there are three categories or three possible kinds of stem changes that verbs may have. The E in the middle may split into an IE. The O in the middle may split into a UE or the E in the middle may split into an I. And this last one, the E splitting into an I is a very small category of verbs. There are not a whole ton of verbs that do that particular type of stem change. They are, uh, you know, that's a tiny category. So that's a category you don't have to worry about a whole lot uh, because you're not going to encounter a whole ton of them. But uh, I am pulling out some examples of verbs that we are going to encounter in these categories. Okay, so uh, the stem change happens with the vowel that is immediately before the AR or before the ER or before the IR of the infinitive, okay? And nosotros and vosotros do not have a stem change. And you don't have to worry about the vosotros form unless you go to Spain, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So this is why they call these boot or shoe verbs. And you're going to mm -hmm. see when you watch the video on it, why they call those boot or shoe verbs, because when you think of the chart of conjugation, the conjugation chart, mm -hmm. uh, you know, those six forms of conjugations, uh, the forms that get a stem change form a little boot, and they'll visually show that to you mm -hmm. in the video. Okay, so let's take a quick look at um, not the E to I, well, we will look at the E to I, but um, what this means by which vowel gets the change. Is this backwards or can you read this properly? Read. We can read it. You can read it. Okay, great. I'm never quite sure because sometimes it doesn't, in my, in my little screen, it's a mirror image and it's like, oh, I can't read that. But querer, to want. Here is a, a very high frequency word because we often say, I want, do you want, what does he want? Yeah. And uh, querer gets a stem change. Mm -hmm. And you just need to know that the E, oh, look, the E is the E that's right next door to, right in the syllable, right next door to the ER. This is the E that has to change. So it changes from an E into an IE. So it becomes quiero, right? Quiero, quieres, you want, quiere, he or she wants, quieren, they want, yeah? But nosotros flicks back into this stem. And the reason I call this stem changing verb, this part of the verb is called a stem, a stem, like a stem on a, a plant, okay? So it goes back to the original vowel. The nosotros form goes back to the original vowel, and it does not split off into an IE. That is what tener does, right? Not for tengo, I have, but for tienes, tiene, tienen, but tenemos, right? But querer, again, it's here, okay? Um, we're going to show you a little more complicated one. Ooh, ooh, I've got, how do I know? Oh, it's a stem changing verb, preferir, to prefer. Prefiero. And how do I know which E? Well, the E that gets the IE that the second. is the one that is next door to the infinitive ending. Oh, Okay, so the IE doesn't happen here. The IE happens here because this is the syllable that's next door to the infinitive ending. Oh, yeah, so you always know which syllable it is. It's the syllable where it's going to happen. Preferir. Prefiero. Prefieres. 
One person prefiere. it's prefiere. 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 A bunch prefiere. of people it's prefieren. Prefiere. But nosotros is going to go back to the prefiere. and keep this original vowel. Preferimos. Preferimos. Okay. Prefiere. So a lot Prefiere. of a lot of stem changing verbs like here, there's really only one E that could possibly get that IE change. But here, whoa, I got two E. How do I know which one? Well, the one right next door to that end marker, right? Okay. That says, hello, I'm a verb. Yeah. Uh, there you go. That's the one that gets the stem change. Okay. So those are two examples of an E to I E stem change. I'm going to show you the other common stem change, this contar, which means to tell a story. Yeah. Uh, this, and again, well, this is the O that happens to be next door to the AR part. Yeah, that's all I got to work with. So it's, I tell, I'm telling you is cuento. cuento. And notice the yo form is still what you expect it to be. It's an O for yo, right? Mm -hmm. Cuento. So you're making two changes, not one, but two changes to this type of verb. When you conjugate it, you do the ending, right? I take off the AR, right? I do the regular ending, but I also have to do this UE thing unless it's nosotros, right? So yo Cuento, tú cuentas, I get this ah sound, uh, él o mm -hmm. ella mm -hmm. o usted cuenta, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, more than one person, I'm going to get an N at mm -hmm. the end, cuentan, cuentan, with an N at the end, cuentan, but I've got to have this UE here, cuento, Cuentas, cuenta, cuentan, but nosotros goes back to this original O. Nosotros will not use the UE. It'll be contamos, contamos, contamos. Okay, bien. Okay. Marilyn? Uh, sí, sí. You used, um, you used uh, this is just for some verbs. It's just it for some verbs. Yes. Yes. So these verbs are what we call irregular verbs, but they're a special pattern of irregular verbs called stem changers. And they're going to use the same kind of endings like you always used, but you're going to have a little <laughs> internal, internal vowel change, <laughs> unless it's nosotros. Okay. And, and the video will show you the whole gamut of these. So um, here, here's what I'm going to do because we're, we're getting up to the end here. Uh, we're going to take a look at not the conjugation end of it yet, but just what do they mean? Uh, because sadly, you just have to know, oh, this is a stem changing verb. You just have to get to know them. And you're not going to know 100% of them. So we're going to show you some common ones that you will run into a lot and what kind they are. And when you get the link to this, don't take copious notes because you're going to get to download. You can get right into this. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to make sure I put them aside so that you see them next to each other. Uh, yeah, Uncle Sam, I want you want. Mm -hmm. querer. And you're going to see which I'm going to underline for you, which vowel gets the funny little change. Mm -hmm. OK, so you're going to see this later on. And I'll, I'll have them moved over for now. OK, uh, so some of you know a few of these. So I'm going to ask if somebody knows this oh, verb. Yeah. CCC. To sleep. It doesn't, yeah, it, it doesn't have an dormir doesn't have an e in it. So it can't be an e to i e. It's got to be an o to u e. Duermo. 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 Duermes. Duerme. Duermen. But nosotros will go back to the original o. Dormimos. Dormimos. 
So we'll, mm-hmm. we'll, I want you to, to this week, get, get familiar with the vocabulary side of, Ooh, which verbs will I anticipate are, are going to have these kinds of changes first. Okay. And if you can't formulate the conjugations perfectly, don't sweat that yet. Get familiar with what kinds of verbs do these. And Here so, is an I, yeah, pensar. Here is an I, E verb to think. And often when you say think about, instead of using the word about, you're going to use en, pensar en. Mm-hmm. So pienso, mm-hmm. piensas, piensa, mm-hmm. piensan, but Pensamos. The nosotros goes back to the P-E-N that you had originally. Bien? Okay? okay. Vale? Sí? Aquí? Correo. Oh, we've got somebody at the starting gate. Correr. Yes. Uh, well, it would be correr, but... Empezar. Empezar. Yeah. Empezar. Empezar. Empiezo. Right. Empiezo. Empiezas. Empieza. Empiezan, but empezamos, bien, vale, uh, to begin to start. And you will pair this up with a second non-conjugated verb, right? Empieza a llover, it is starting to rain. Empiezo a hablar con el grupo, I'm starting to talk with the group like that. So this particular verb, you have to pair up with a second one, usually. Here's a very common stem changer. Cerrar, to close. Cerrar. Cierro. Cierras. Cierra. Cierran for more than one person. But the nosotros is going to back to the go back to the C-E-R original. Cerramos. Cerramos. Okay. Cerramos. Bien. Vale. Okay. Oh, to say that mm. somebody can do something, do. can do something, can do to be able. I'm trying to move my poder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, poder. poder. Poder is a very common stem change. Poder. It is not an I-E stem change. It is a U-E stem change. Puedo. So, puedo, I can. Puedes, mm-hmm. you can. Puede, he can. Puede, she can, usted puede, you can, pueden, they can, but nosotros goes back to the O, the original O, podemos, podemos, bien, okay, a ver, so uh, what you're going to get for homework will be, uh, ooh, a whole bunch of verbs, you're going to see a whole bunch of verbs and what they mean, and uh, you're, you're, Your task will be to mainly get familiar with what kinds of verbs will get stem changes. I'll show you in those slides the kind of stem change it gets. And then you're going to watch two videos. You're going to watch about the IE category and the UE category, okay? Not the teeny tiniest little E to I category yet, but those two categories. And next week, we're going to practice a lot of those. And I will give you some typical questions Mm -hmm. or conversational things to practice that with. Okay. Bien. A ver. Um, So you're going to get two vocab videos about food related and kitchen related stuff. And then two grammar videos about IE stem changes and UE stem changes. Bien? Mm-hmm. And Bien. we're going to revisit them and use them a lot in speaking practice uh, come next week. Mm-hmm. ¿Está bien? Está bien. Ah, perfecto. Perfecto. Muy bien. Uh, so I want you, if you are in the more like the more beginner kind of phase person, be more concerned with learning the vocabulary of those stem changers. Ooh, what do they mean? What do the actual verbs mean? Like I can do something or I'm starting to do something, right? Or I'm thinking about something. Uh, Go for the vocabulary end of it and we'll flesh out a little more the how to use it during class uh, next week. So if you struggle with the how to use a stem changer, 
don't worry because that's something we'll dip our toe into okay. heavy duty and maybe even jump into the pool, depending on which <laughs> spectrum you know you're at. Uh, next week, la semana que viene. Bien. Okay. Bien. 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 Gracias. Adios. Okay. Thank you. Fantastico. Gracias. Uh, you'll get your email with all the links for the videos, all the links for the slides and notes and things that you need uh, yeah. as we go along. Actually, okay? I have a question, but I think the time is up. So um, I oh, guess can, I'm just going to You send. can tell me your question. See. I'm, I'm, you know, I tried the, uh, the, the quiz um, last week um, about this um, Gustar using the, uh, the oh. Gustar here. Okay. Um, actually, they have two two question two two numbers but it's like a kind of similar problem uh one is a uh, is number four here is uh at tus amigos amigos uh, les parece comico tu padre el quiere caer les bien so i didn't do caer les i did the right one on the les parece but on the uh el quiere Caer less bien. I don't do caer less, but I oh. pick, pick uh, less, less caer, less caer. So then it wasn't right because it's supposed to be caer less instead of less caer. Yeah. El quiere caer les bien. Uh, uh, yeah. He, I'm uh, confused on using the wants, why, what my is answer is wrong. That is a complicated one. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to tell you that was hard. <laughs> Secondly. Yeah. Um, two two, two he, problem but, actually is similar like that. And I got it wrong on both. Yeah. He wants to be liked. He, he wants to be liked. So caer bien means to like a human being as opposed mm. to liking a thing. Gusta, yeah. And they generally use caer bien uh, with uh, uh, expressing the idea of you like a human being, like you just like their personality. Okay. So I would say, don't worry about that because they really threw a big curveball in that. That was a hard question. Sometimes it's hard for me to find a self-correcting quiz. It's going to have all the easy stuff in it. They're going to have one hard one. Uh, quiere, quiere caerles bien? Is that what they said? Quiere caerles bien? Uh, el, el, quiere, el quiere caerles bien. Yeah. He wants to be liked by them. He, he, he wants to be a funny guy because he wants them to like him. Yeah. That's all that that meant. And don't worry, uh, quiere caerles, it had to combine because it's two verbs working together. Yeah. And that second verb is caerles bien, uh, meaning that idea of liking a person. That's all that means. Oh, yeah, it's just like, you know, you, uh, when I put it, like when I pick the one that is less on the front and the, the one, the caer on the back, they mark me wrong. Yeah. So it has to be caer less. Uh, it, it does. Uh, well, mm, you, okay. You can also say les quiere caer. Les, you can bring the les up in front of quiere. Oh, les oh. caer, you can. Okay. That's when I have two verbs working together and I've mm. got a pronoun, whether it's me or te or le or whatever it is. Okay. Uh, it can come in front of that verb number one that's conjugated or I can tack it on to the end of the infinitive. I can do okay. that too. But sometimes in a self-correcting quiz, it won't give you that option because it can't make two things correct. And that's probably what happened there. Okay. Just so you know. Okay. That, that was kind of a problematic one. No, <laughs> don't, don't worry. 